So, so far with my study in pen and ink of my chair, all I've done is establish the width of the top of the back of the seat and the height of it. Um, the width hit down here, or the height rather, down here is about half of the overall width. And I've done that by sight size measuring, which I showed you at the beginning of the session. Um, I've established the bar, which goes below it, and the back of the seat. And now I'm going to begin to indicate um, by looking at the relationship of where the seat starts to the back here, and it just comes in a bit, and then you get the angle of the seat, which I'm just going to lightly draw in. Um, and then the other side, obviously, is in a similar place. It's a little bit further over. So it starts over here, and obviously it's parallel with this. The width of it from the back to the front, I'm just checking again with sight size measuring. So I'm lining up my pen with the back of the seat and then running my thumb down to where the front of the seat is and comparing that with the um, top of the chair, the back of the top of the chair. It's about two thirds of this height. So that's telling me that two thirds here is about the width of the seat. So the seat comes to about here, it's quite narrow because it's um, obviously in perspective. So I can now just lightly establish that line there, the seat line. Um, the other thing, of course, that needs to go in is an indication of um, the sort of bar that runs down the top of the seat here. And it comes forward like so. I'm just going to push it in lightly at this stage in case I have to um, correct anything. So this is the back line and this is the front line. So it's here. Like that. Uh, and then I have another bar on the other side, exactly the same sort of thing. Again, I'm just going to put it in lightly until I have clarified in my mind where things actually should go. Um, now, why I did this was to work out roughly where the bar at the back comes down. So the, there's a bar that runs down from here and it comes down to there. Slightly at an angle. And then it's obviously a double piece of wood. So, and the same on the other side, although I can see just about the inside of that bar. So angle it a bit more. So, um, needs to come over a bit. It's actually more of an angle than I thought it was. So, I'm going to draw this down here. And this comes down at this point. And then this is where it gets slightly tricky. You've got a little bar coming out of here. And the top of a piece of wood that comes down. So, and they almost touch each other. It's that. And then it comes down to an angle. It's getting that angle correct and its relationship with the back of the seat. So again, I'm going to hold my pen up and check where the back seat, how it relates to the edge of this. So if I was to draw an imaginary line down here, which I could do, a vertical line, it just helps me to think, well, OK, that actually has got to come like this, like so. And um, it, you can just see the, the very side of this piece of wood. So I'm just going to put that in as well. And then this comes along the front. And this piece of wood here comes down 
and you see the front of it. You see more of the front of that leg than you do the back of the side of it. Um, this back piece of wood comes down here. There's a little gap in there. Um, I could probably make a forward now to make this a little bit wider than I have. So you've got, and you've got the side of it which is showing here, so that makes that little space in there pretty small. So that's that. Um, and I can finish off this perhaps here. And this also obviously relates to this one here, so they need to be the same sort of size and height. Um, and then what I do see is this leg here at the back um, comes down behind the chair and reappears but there is a bar going across the chair which again is parallel with the front of the seat and I would say the space between the front edge and that next bar is about the same as here so you can kind of use these measurements again to help you um, and you have to see how it relates to the front edge of the chair. Well, I think it's actually about there. So we've got another bar going across the chair. You've got the chair front coming here. And we've got the back bar appearing again almost parallel to that one so we've got it coming down here and again there's a little tiny sliver at the side which i can see the side of the back leg not much um, i'm going to check the, where that leg is by again measuring from the front of the seat to the bottom of the leg and comparing that with from the back of the seat to the top of the chair. Funnily enough, it's exactly the same. So what I'm saying is this measurement here to here is the same as what I've drawn from the seat to the floor. So I've got that leg in, luckily, in the right position. Now there's another um, bar at the back from this leg, which cuts across behind the other leg. And again, I'm just going to check the measurement of it, the space, the space is all approximately the same. So that space there gives me the next bar, which runs into the back leg. Across there. And then there's a further, obviously, well, what I need to do now is to establish where this other leg is. So again, I'm going to just utilize the rules of perspective which you know i've got a a box here if anything i think this back leg will probably be a little bit shorter than i've made it i think it's a little bit on the long side um that's the front leg and this is the side of it and then this comes down here um, and then i have a bar that goes across here which again um runs from about here goes across. It's a bit wider than the bars, so it's a piece of wood almost like this. Like so. And that just really leaves me the back here to finish off. I've got that, that front leg, but now I need to do the back leg. So I've got this back leg, which as I said, I think I made a little bit on the long side. Maybe it's even still, I think, too long so I'm going to shorten it so all this has got to come out and I'll probably wipe that out with some ink, paint or something like that and then I can look across and make a decision about the back leg here which obviously must come somewhere in, around here it, there's a, a cross piece which comes from just where that returns and creates a little triangle in there then reappears out the side at the back and comes down to hit that bar um, 
there, and then there's another piece here, the other side of it, which uh, joins on from here. So there's a piece that's joining on, goes across here, comes down, comes down here like this, and then um, goes below that bar and finishes off on the same line as the one that I've drawn there. So do that, bring that forward. And there's a little bar here that I can see, a little piece of wood, like so. And that's roughly what I'm going to call it a day with that. There are certain adjustments I think to make which I will use some acrylic ink for. Now, as well as having this drawing here, I haven't finished the back seat. This has got three divisions in wood in it. So there's one there, one there, one there. So got these sort of um, planks of wood that go across the back of the chair. Another one coming, coming here. Another one there, a gap, and then another one there. So there's one, two, three, one, two, three, like that. Um, now, I'm never happy with leaving a drawing without some sort of context. So I'm uh, just going to put these bars in very quickly. Um, and then there's a cupboard, there's a line of the cupboard comes about here behind this chair. It appears down here. And I guess I could do this as a double line because I think then it makes more sense. Um, and the top of the little cupboard goes across here. And there's some doors which come about there. Again, a double line. and some little handles, one there, one there, and they're sort of the shape. Uh, and then I'd probably do another double line here. Now, as such, I haven't done any shading or tone on any of this. Um, and I probably uh, would do something with it, you know, to kind of create a note of interest. I think there's there's a sink behind this chair, this chair, so I could actually put that in as well. Um, goes right the way across, and the cupboard line again it all adds to the sort of interest in the drawing. I think when you put these little details in, it carries on. There's another cupboard over here. Um, now there are sort of car shadows being created by the lights behind, which I might just suggest with my pen. Um, you know, I might just draw these in with a little bit of what's happening and so on. And there'll be another one on the other side. I might just go back and do this a bit more carefully, um, draw them in. And there's one that goes between the legs at the back as well. So that's probably quite helpful to have that then. And then of course I draw the little bar more carefully as, so that we know what's going on. It cuts across into that other seat and that other piece there. There's a little join in there. There's all sorts of little um, additional bits that need to go into this drawing. But I think essentially the shape and proportion at this stage is more or less in. Um, and as I say, with these things that need correcting, I'll probably just get my white acrylic paint and just paint out things that are not quite right. And there, I, I just wouldn't worry about it because I think it, it actually adds to the interest and charm of a pen and ink drawing if it's not totally perfect.